we are looking at question number 10 in the IGCSE additional maths paper code 0606 slash 21 May June 2013 this question carries 8 points involves uh, relative velocity so let's read the question first yeah? uh, we are told a plane whose speed in still air is 240 km per hour so I am using some symbols here P for plane and I am using A for air okay so uh, speed in still air is 240 km per hour so I can write it in vector notation the velocity of P relative to A okay this is the notation we use uh, in our books in our exercises and so on okay again this is the velocity of P relative to A again P is the plane A is air okay A is for air good and the number is given to us uh, 240 km per hour that's the magnitude that's why we refer to this as the speed and uh, the question goes on it is flying directly from A to B Okay, here we have it, flying directly from A to B, and we are told that B is 500 km from A on a bearing of 0, 3, 2 degrees. So, I indicated that on a picture here, the distance and the bearing. There is a constant wind okay, of 50 km per hour blowing from the west, so since I have denoted uh, air with capital A, so this will be the velocity vector of the wind yeah? so I'm using uh, VA okay and it's blowing from the west so this is just the notation that I'm going to use okay so this is for the wind good our question find the bearing on which the plane is steered okay the bearing on which the plane is steered so let's write it here we are looking for the bearing on which the plane is steer. So, concept wise, yeah, uh, try and learn it quickly. Yeah? The concept wise, if you are asked to find the bearing on which the plane is steered, we are looking for the direction of P given A, or we are looking for the direction of the velocity of P relative to A. Okay, if you see this question, or if we are working a problem that involves trying to find the bearing on which the plane is steered, or in some other cases it may be a boat is steered, we are looking for the direction of the relative velocity. So we are looking for the direction of the okay velocity of P relative to A. Great. Concept wise again, remember we want to go from A to B. So, which means the true velocity of A, or rather, the true velocity of P must be along AB. Again, we want to go from A to B. So, the true velocity of the plane, what is the true velocity of the plane? That will be, okay, this one here will be the true velocity of the plane. So, if we want to go, because it's an important point, I want to emphasize this. If you want to get from A to B, the true velocity of the plane must be along AB. So, let's write it here. Great. So, we have to set the plane in such a direction. Okay, we have to set the plane in such a direction so that we'll move in a certain direction and with the wind, the resultant will be along AB. So, let's use an important equation which in some books is called the relative velocity equation so we can write okay is equals to okay this in some books is known as the relative velocity equation remember this is all in vector notation so this is vector addition here yeah? relative velocity equation so again okay, this is the velocity of P relative to A plus the velocity of 
A will give us the velocity of P. Now, again, I want to remind you this is vector addition, so we'll have to draw our vector diagram. Okay, we have to draw a uh, triangle of velocities. This will be what we call the resultant of these two components. So let's start. Okay, let's start. Okay, great. So we have VP and we have VA and we have VP relative to A. So this is the direction in which we are going to steer the plane so that with assistance from the wind we are going to end up at the point B. Okay. So this is following this uh, vector addition, velocity of P relative to A plus velocity of A will give us the resultant velocity of P. Okay, now let's mark in some angles. Now we know this is 32, so this will be 90 minus 32, which will be, let's mark it in, 58, that will be 58 degrees. And we're looking at alternate angles here, so this will be... 58. Let's mark in the magnitudes. Uh, the magnitude here will be 50 and the magnitude here will be 240. Now we are almost done. Okay. Let me draw that again. Okay. We are almost done. Just use a sign rule. Yeah. Okay. Great. So let's go ahead and use, let's label this angle alpha. Okay. Let's label it alpha. So we have got, uh, let's pick some, you, let me write it down here, using the sine rule. So I can write 50 over sine alpha, okay, uh, not, not, not difficult, yeah, because we are able to, if we look at our picture here, uh, remember this is, uh, let's get some angles out. I've got 240. Okay, this is 240. Uh, let me get that again. Okay. <coughs> the magnitude of the speed of the plane divided by this angle here. How much is this angle? Because we know this angle here. Okay, we know this angle here. We can write. 50 over sine alpha will be equals to 240 over sine 58. Okay, we're using the sine rule and I've labeled some angles so that you can easily catch on. Okay, I have 58 degrees, alternate angles, I just uh, indicated one angle alpha so that it's easier for us to use the sine rule. And cleaning this up, we can get sine alpha equals to 50 times sine 58 divided by 240. Use your calculator and you'll get alpha is equals to 10.2 degrees. Okay? Now we are looking for the bearing on which the plane is steered. So we need this angle. Now we know this whole angle here. Okay? We know the whole angle is... Um, 32, yeah? that's given to us, yeah? 32. So this whole angle is 32, therefore we can find this angle here, okay, 32 minus 10.2, and you will get 21.8. So therefore, your bearing will be 0 021.8 degrees. And we are done for the first part. Stop.